In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this procedural sci-fi alien metal material in Blender. And I got the idea for this material from my sci-fi alien orb geometry nodes tutorial. So it's a tutorial which I recently posted on how to create this looping animation of this alien orb using geometry nodes. And so I had two different materials, a metal material and a glowing material. And so I thought it would be cool to join both of those materials together and create this sci-fi alien metal. If you'd like to purchase the project files then you can get that over on my Gumroad store in my Patreon page with the links in the description and you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So before we create the procedural material I wanted to show you what I have set up in the 3D space if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So I pressed shift A, I went here to mesh, and I added a plane and also a cube just so that I have something to preview the materials on. And then with both of these objects, if you tab into edit mode, you can use the object context menu and you can subdivide the objects. And I subdivided these objects many times so that they have lots of geometry. And why I did that is because I'm going to be using the displacements in the node editor to actually displace the mesh, and so it needs more geometry so that the displacements have more detail to work with. So if you want to use the displacements, I would recommend subdividing your mesh. And then I just positioned the cube and the plane right here. And then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the object. And then to get some nice lighting, I added this area light right here, and I scaled it up really big, and then I turned the power up to 400, and then I gave it this cool, like, slightly greenish, bluish color to kind of look like maybe some alien kind of greenish lighting. And then I also added this light right here, so this is another area light with the power of 400 and kind of this greenish color. And then on this one, I turned the shape here to rectangle, and I turned up the X size so that it is longer, so it kind of acts like a rim light and just gives some nice light lighting here on the side of the objects. And then to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections over here on the world properties, I added in this Skylit Garage 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the links in the description if you'd like to download it. So if you add a new world, right here on the color, you can click on the yellow dot and you can choose environment texture and then you can click on the open button and open up the downloaded HDRI. And then to make it darker, I just turned the strength to 0.2 because I didn't want to be too bright. And then also if you go up here to the render properties, if you want the background to be transparent, then you can open up the film tab right here and you can click on the transparent button and that way you won't be able to see the HDRI in the background. And then also to make the lighting and the colors a bit nicer, if you go to the color management, you can use the filmic view transform. And then also you can change the look here to high contrast and this will pop out the colors and make everything more saturated and contrasty. So now let's go over the displacement settings. So if you want to use the displacements in the node editor and actually have it displace the mesh, so actually have it pop out the mesh, then you will need to use the cycles rendering engine. So right up here on the render properties, make sure this is cycles. And then I'm going to be using the adaptive displacement. So if you want to use the adaptive displacement, you'll need to set the feature set here to experimental. And then you can click on the object. So I'm just going to click on the plane here and you can go right over here to the modifier properties and you can click on add modifier here and I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier. So this is going to subdivide the mesh even more. It already is pretty subdivided, but I want to add the subdivision surface modifier to give it even more detail. And then I also clicked on simple right here because if you change it to the Catmull Clark, then the edges are actually going to be round. So if you click on simple, then the edges will be straight. And then to use the adaptive subdivision, you can check mark the adaptive subdivision right there, and you'll see the adaptive subdivision setting if you have the feature set set to experimental. And then also I just set the dicing scale to 10 because I didn't need it to be too high detail. And then I did the same thing for this cube. So on the cube, you can click on add modifier and add it the subdivision surface and I set the Catmull Clark instead to simple, and I also turned on the adaptive subdivision with the dicing scale set to 10. So now let's add a new material. So I'm in the shading workspace, so I have the 3D space right here, and I am in the rendered view, and then I have the shader nodes over here. And I'm just going to click on the new button to add a new material. 
Now we need to tell this material that it can use the displacements. So let's click right over here to go to the material properties and I'm going to scroll down to the settings. So to tell this material to use the displacement, if you open up the surface here under settings, we can click on the displacement here and we want to set this to displacement only. And then before we create the procedural material, I will also be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit and then you can go to the preferences and then click on the add-ons tab and you can search for node wrangler and then just check mark the node wrangler add-on. So it's built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I'm going to create a cool sci-fi metal texture for the material. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the brick texture and let's drop it down here. And then because we turned on the node wrangler add-on, I can hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes and that is going to preview the node on the object. So I'm going to control shift and select the brick texture. And then also with the brick texture selected, I'm going to press control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't need the mapping so I can select it and press X to delete it. And then I want to use the object coordinate. So let's take the object and I'm going to put that into the vector of the brick texture. And then I want another node in here to distort the vector of the brick texture. So if we add another node in here, then that node will distort the placement of how the brick texture is being placed on the object. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture, and let's stick the Voronoi in between the object and the brick texture. And then I want to change some of the settings of the Voronoi, so let's click on the 3D, and I'm going to change this instead to 4D, and then I'm going to click on the F1, and let's change this to F2. And then let's click right here on the bottom drop down, and I'm going to change this to the Chebyshev. So the Chebyshev, if I control shift and select the Voronoi texture, you can see the Chebyshev Chev is making all these little squares here. So I want to take the distance from the Voronoi and I want to put that into the vector, the brick texture. And then I can control shift and select the bricks texture to preview it. And you can see what it's doing. So we're getting this really cool procedural sci-fi metal texture. And if you want to change the randomness, you can change the W here. And that's just going to change the randomness of that texture. And then right here on the Voronoi texture scale, I'm going to turn this to a three because I think three is a bit better. Now let's change some of the colors of the brick texture. So I'm going to click on color one here and I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. So it's kind of like a light gray. Let's click on color two and I'm just going to make this like a little bit brighter. So it's kind of like a medium gray. And then the mortar here, I'm going to turn this up a bit. So it's just kind of like a dark gray. So something like that. So I now want to put this brick texture into the base color of the shader. So let's pull out a wire from the brick texture color and we're going to put that into the base color and then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now this is going to be a metal material so to make it metal I want to take the metallic and I want to turn this up to one so that it is fully metallic. And we can also turn the roughness down a little bit to make it more shiny. But I don't just want to use a single value, a single roughness value. I want some parts to be a little bit more rough and other parts to be a little bit more shiny. So what I'm going to do is press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's put the noise texture above the Voronoi. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And I want to use the object coordinate. So let's put the object into the vector and that way it'll be placed on the objects more evenly. And then I want to make this noise texture very detailed. So let's turn the detail to the max of 15. So I can now take the factor here and I'm going to stick this into the roughness of the principled shader. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader. So now you can see some parts are more rough, whereas other parts are more shiny. But I want to be able to control this better. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and let's search for a color ramp. I'm going to click on the color ramp and let's drop it here in between the noise texture and the principled shader. So I can now change these colors and that's going to change how rough and shiny the values are. So I'm first going to click on the white tab and I actually want to drag the white tab out just so that it's a bit more contrasty and then I can click on the white tab here and I can make it darker and you can see if I make it darker it's going to be much more shiny so I just want to make this kind of like a light gray something like that and then I don't want this black tab to be fully black so I'm going to click on the color here and I'm just going to turn up a little bit so it's just a very dark gray now I also want to put some data into the normal to give it some bump so I'm first going to take the noise texture here. I'm going to take the factor and let's put that into the normal. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues. It looks super black and that's because this is black and white data, but then this here is normal data. So we need to put a node in here to convert this into normal data. 
So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a bump node, and let's put the bump node in the wire between the noise texture and the normal. And then we actually need to put this into the height value. So put the noise texture into the height of the bump so that it's actually converting it to normal data. And now it looks super bumpy, but that is way too strong. So let's turn the strength way down. And so I'm going to turn the bump strength to a 0.02 so that it is very subtle, but it will just give a little bit of bump and noise to the metal. Now I also want this brick texture here to be going into the bump. So let's click on this bump node and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and let's stick it after the first one. So the normal can go through the normal. So we now have another height value that we can add data into and it'll be converted to normal data. So let's take the color here from the brick texture and I'm going to put that into the height. And then we need to make this stronger, so I'm going to turn this up, and you can see now those little edges look like they're actually popping out. So I'm just going to turn the strength of this one to just like a 0.2, so it is a bit subtle, but those edges look like they're popping out now. You can especially see it right here in the reflections of the plane. And that is it for the base metal. So what I'm going to do is click and drag. That's going to add a box select. And I'm just going to drag and then let go. And that's going to select all these nodes here. I don't want to select the material output or the texture coordinate, but all the other nodes. I can now press Control J. And Control J is going to add this frame right here. And I can actually like bring these in a little bit just to like compact them, make them a bit smaller. And so this is just a nice way to organize the nodes. So I can drag this around. And this is all the base metal. So now. I'm going to be creating another material and that is going to be the emission and then we're going to mix them together. So to create the emission material I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to start by searching for the emission shader. Let's put the emission shader right here above the principle and then I can control shift and select the emission shader and we can preview it. Now I want to add a little bit of noise into it so I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's bring the noise texture over here and then I want to use the object coordinates. So let's take the object and we're going to put that into the vector of this noise texture. And then I want to take the factor of the noise texture and I can put that into the color of the emission. So now the emission is emitting the color of the noise texture. And then I want to change some of the settings of the noise texture. So let's just turn the scale here to like three so that it's a bit smaller. And then I want to change the colors of the noise texture because right now it's just white and black. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I can search for the color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and put it in between the emission and the noise texture. And then I want to click on the black tab here and click on the color. And you can of course make this whatever color you want. But to make it look like an alien sci-fi metal, I'm going to make this a bright green color. Maybe just make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to click on this white tab. And this one is going to be a similar color. So it's going to be green and it's going to be bright, but it's going to be a little bit more yellow. And I could also take this green tab and drag it over to make it a bit more contrasty. And if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using for the green colors, for this lighter green, I'm going to be using a hex value of 6A FF24. So you can punch in that value if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using. And then for the slightly darker green, if you click on the color and go to the hex, I'm going to be using a hex value of 1B C6. Zero, zero. And then I do want to make the emission much brighter. So let's turn the strength to like a 10 so it is very bright. So now we have this very bright green and it is looking a bit blown out, but it really will look nicer if it's much brighter. And it will also help for adding a glow in the compositor to actually make the brighter parts glowing. So that is it for the emission material. So I'm just going to click and drag to box select all these nodes and I can press Control J and that is going to join them together into a frame. And I can even compact these, just kind of bring them in a little bit. So we now have both of these shaders and so I want to mix them together. And so to mix them together I can first select the emission and then hold down the shift key and select the principled shader. So they're both selected. I can now press control zero and control zero is using a feature of the node wrangler add-on and it's going to add this mix RGB. So I can just bring this over here, bring the material output back. And so we're basically mixing between these two. So I can drag the factor and that's going to blend between either using the emission or using the principle. 
labeled, but I don't want to evenly blend between them. I want some areas to have the emission, but then most places to be the metal. So what we're going to do is use a texture. We're going to put the texture into the factor, and that'll tell it where it's going to be the emission and where it's going to be the principal. So let's take this brick texture right here. We're going to take the color and let's put that into the factor. Now it's not very clear where the metal is and where the glowing parts are, so I need to make it more contrasty. So let's press Shift A, go here to the search, and I'm going to search again for another color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp, and I'm going to drop it here in this wire. And you can see it also brought it here into this frame. So what I'm going to do is press Alt P, and Alt P is going to break it off from the frame, and I can actually stick it up here in this frame. Uh, you don't have to put it in a frame if you don't want to, but I'm going to stick it up here in this frame. So the brick texture is going into this color ramp, and then it's going into the factor. And so because the texture is going into the factor, it's going to tell it where it's going to be the emission and where it's going to be the principal. So I can drag these together to make it more contrasty. And then I actually want to make this consistent because I don't want any even blending in the colors. So I'm going to click on the linear here and I can change this to constant. And then I can just kind of drag these around and I can tell it how much I want it to use. So I'm actually going to drag the black tab over. I'm going to bring the black tab over to about here and then I'm going to drag the white tab over and I want to make another white tab. So what I can do is hold hold down the control key and click right here in the white area. That's going to add another tab and I can bring this tab over and just kind of play around with where this is. And I need to bring the black tab over a little bit and then I can kind of bring these white tabs together. And I don't actually want that much emission because that's a bit too much. So I will crush these together a little bit. And this is how I like it. So I like having a few lights here and there, but I want it to mostly be the metal. All right, so we are almost done with this material, but I also want to add the displacements to make the mesh actually be popping out. So to do this, I'm actually going to take this Voronoi texture here and duplicate it. So select the Voronoi texture and I can press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate it, but it'll keep the wire plugged up. And then I want to break it off here from the frame so I can press Alt P and that will bring it out of the frame and I can stick it down here. And I'm bringing it down here so it can go around and then go up here to the displacement. And then on this Voronoi texture, I want to take the scale here and I'm just going to turn this to like a five, but I'll leave everything else at the default. Now I'm going to need to convert this Voronoi texture data into displacement data. So let's press Shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I can search for the displacement node. Let's put this here. And then I want to take the distance and I want to put that into the height value of the displacement and then I can drag the displacement over here and I want to put the displacement into the displacement here on the material output so I can drag this down and then I want to put the displacement into the displacement of the material output so it can actually use the displacements. So that is looking really crazy. Uh, it's way too bumpy right now. So let's just turn this scale value way down on the displacement. So for now, I'm just going to turn the scale to 0.2. Now I want to make this displacement value more contrasty because if I zoom in closely and look at the displacement, you can see the edges are very rounded and beveled and it looks a bit too smooth. And I want the displacements to have much more sharp edges. So to make this more contrasty, let's press shift a go to the search and I can again search for a color ramp and let's put the color ramp in between the Voronoi texture and the displacement so I can then drag these values together and by dragging these values together it's going to make that more contrasty and so the displacements will be much more sharp so I'll drag the black tab to about here and the white tab over to about here. So now if you zoom up closely you can see there is like a small bevel but it is much more sharp so now the displacements is much too strong. So let's go back over here to the displacements. And I just want to turn the scale value even more down. And I'm going to use a scale value of 0 0.07. I think 0 0.07 looks pretty good. So you can now see that it's actually displacing the mesh. So if I zoom up closely here, you can see there's all these little sci-fi bits and it's actually displacing the mesh. And that looks super cool. And it also looks really cool here on the plane. There's like all these little bumpy parts and all these little cubes kind of popping out. So that is it. That is the procedural sci-fi alien metal material. So I'm going to render this, and then after I render this, I'm going to do some compositing to make the lights glowing. So I will click on render, and then click on render image. And the render has finished, and that definitely looks really cool. So now let's do some compositing to make it glow. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the compositing tab, and then click on use nodes so you can use the compositing nodes, and also click on a backdrop here so that you can 
can preview it in the background. And then you can hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes. And again, that's going to use the node wrangler add on, and it's going to add this viewer node so we can actually preview the compositing in the background. And then what I can also do is hold down the shift key and I can right click and drag and I can drag a line here over these wires and let go. And that's going to add a reroute. So we can now just add nodes here in this single wire. So I'm first going to press shift a go here to the search and I'm going to search for the denoise node. Let's put the denoise node after the render layers. And I can also just change it to fast because I find that it doesn't really affect the quality. So that's going to smooth out the image and make it look nicer. So I can now press shift a let's go here to the search and I want to search for the glare node. Let's click on the glare node and I can stick this after the denoise. And then I want to click on the streaks and I instead want to use the fog glow. And then I can take the medium here and I'm going to turn that to high. And then I also want to make the background black so it's not using any transparency. So on this viewer node and the composite, I can just uncheck the use alpha and that way it's not going to use any alpha channels. And so the background is just going to be black. So then to save the final image, you can press the F11 key and that's going to take you to the image editor and you can click on the render result and I'm going to change it to the viewer node so we can preview the final compositing. And then to save this, you can click on image and you can click on save as and save the image. So that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can purchase this material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And you can also also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.